A Bold Stroke, The Soviet Liberation of Kiev, 1943, designed by Jack Rady, produced in 1996 by Spearhead Games. I realized last time that I didn't really go over the game components, so I'm going to try and show you the map, counters, um, some of the charts and tables on the map, I guess. And then we will probably start playing out the uh, example of the game. Probably play the first couple turns of this first scenario and just kind of see how it goes. Once again, I'll be playing this game blind. I've done nothing really but read the rules, so everything else will just be um, exploring the game systems and seeing how the game works. So. When I come back, we're going to take a brief look at, like I said, some of the game components, and then we'll start playing. What we have here is an example of the map and some of the terrain features found on the map. Let's see. Areas like this are considered clear terrain. And uh, let's see, these are woods. Dark red is like a highway, and this would be a rail line. This is a city hex. And like over here, we have a town hex. I may not be calling those exactly what they are. Town, city, yes. Let's see. The red is the paved road. There, I don't think I'm showing any black. Or, or not black, but... I'm not showing any dirt roads on there, so. Um, the river, is it a major river? No, it's just a river. This is just a normal river. The name of the city or town. In this case, it's a city, like I said, it's Zitamar, Zitamir. And this terrain over here is swamp. And just off to the left a little bit, we have an airfield. This has to do with the air game, and I'm not sure all the details on it. Haven't really had a chance to go over the air rules um, that thoroughly yet. So, anyway, that's just some of the basic terrain found in the game. Um, as in most text encounter games, it uh, costs varying amounts to enter each hex or cross each hex side. And in this game, it depends upon if you're a class, uh, your movement class, such as leg, <clears throat> cavalry, or motorized and the type of ground conditions. And there are your standard uh, combat modifiers and stuff. So anyway, that is a look at the map. Okay, here is an example of the unit types and values. This unit is an armored unit. Its unit size is core, is a core. The unit designation is the 11th Guards. Stacking value is 3 points. And let's see, we'll switch around to the unit type box in the upper left. This indicates that it is an armored unit or tank unit. Then we have on the far left at the bottom the troop strength. The middle number is the artillery strength. And the far right number on the bottom is the armor anti-tank strength. Uh, the, inside the unit oval is shaded yellow. This represents that it is a motorized or mechanized type unit. The circle 9 is what is called the significant strength of the unit. This will be the value that is used for combat resolution. Um, the different colors indicate different efficiency levels using an optional rule. Um, Units, as they take losses, they lose, they take these losses from the unit's significant strength. So, in effect, this unit has nine steps, or can take nine losses in combat before it is eliminated. If its uh, significant strength was a two, let's say, then, if it was an artillery unit, then it can only take two losses before it would be eliminated. 
Here we have an example of an artillery unit. The information contained on it is similar to all the other units. The, genus desi the unit designation is First Guards Unit, and that is a divisional asset. Stacking value is a 2. Its armor anti-tank strength is a parentheses 1, uh, which means that it can only be used uh, as an anti-tank value. Uh, cannot attack, but it uses that value to defend. Its significant strength is a 6, and its troop strength is a 1 parenthesized. Indicates uh, that it may not be used for an attack. And let's see, except for the headquarters units, any unit with an artillery range value is an artillery unit, and its artillery range in this case is a 2. And finally, we have an our, our headquarters unit. <clears throat> the parentheses uh, values indicate an tank strength only. Parentheses troop strength may not be used for an attack, much like the other units, which are similar to this. It has a stacking value, and it has no artillery strength, and it basically has a defensive troop strength. There's no artillery, and the symbol in the middle basically indicates that it is a headquarters unit. If it was a rifle uh, army, it would uh, have a rifle symbol in there, or infantry symbol, with the um, red triangles. So, basically, that's a look at the primary unit types and their values, and I think we will probably uh, move on to the first turn of the scenario and um, play out a couple turns and just kind of see what the game is like.